Hey guys, quick video update. This is my GTEC A10. Um, now, my last video, I uh, <laughs> I had some complaints about the quality of the motherboard. I had some complaints about the quality of the build plate. As you can see, the build plate is solid. It is where it should be now. Um, and I think I've already covered why it's solid. Uh, because I had to actually drill a hole in part of the acrylic to move the eccentric nut a little bit over um, about this far to get it to uh, to get it to make contact with the uh, with the railing when it uh, when it was tightened up. Um, here is a Lurge X controller board. Now there are a couple things I need to do, but um, I have finally, I got this in today, um, I am done with the GT2560 uh, Arduino clone that comes with this uh, that comes with this machine. I'm going to walk you through exactly what I did. Um, so where I could, um, I swapped out the end stops. For these GTEC uh, Maker Bot clone uh, switches, um, I wired the uh, this rear end stop here because I couldn't get one of those switches into it. Uh, I wired the rear end stop there to um, a Maker Bot clone board switch uh, by simply removing the actual micro switch which, my goodness, uh, which was not necessary. Like, I just wired it in to here uh, so that this board would read it correctly. Now, there's a lot of light going on over here. I'll try to shield some of, uh, shield some of it because my phone is being weird, and I apologize for the brightness. Um, but I've just... Uh, I just had one heck of a time getting ever, getting all the uh, switches. So the stock switches on this will not work unless you modify them uh, the way that I did or outright swap them. So I've got two of those MakerBot switches on the uh, Y axis and on the Z axis and I had to cut those um, I had to cut those down quite a bit, uh, a little bit just to get them to fit. Um... I have taken the thermistor, the heater, and the fan ports, these first three from this uh, from this little collar here, it says EX. So I've taken these first three and wired them to uh, pin headers. So if I unplug this, you'll see just a bunch of pin headers. Um, or header pins rather and I'll try and hold my phone and do this so you guys can see um, so I just made one of these I took uh, a 3d printing pen in fact uh, my wife got me one for Christmas it's one of these uh, it's called a smart gear you can get it at Kohl's for like 60 bucks although it's <laughs> it's kinda bad um, but uh, I made a connector for that this other connector right behind this glob or right in the middle of this glob is another fan connector that's for the layer fan and these last four pins are for the extruder motor so if you wanted to use the uh, stock extruder um, uh, connector I guess um, you would just have to map it which isn't entirely difficult. I just used my multimeter to see which went where. Um, I don't have the heated bed plugged in yet, so I'm just going to have to use ABS for this for a little while. Um, but I do have uh, pin headers soldered and ready to go. Um, and I do have a set for the thermistor, which is this la these last two uh, connectors here on the plug. Uh, and then these four connectors go to power and go to uh, ground. Um, and then it was just a simple matter of using these, uh, these NEMA 17 cables 
that I got on eBay a long time ago for my Ultimaker clone that um, that I just pulled off. I yanked it because there are issues with that that I now have to fix. But all in all, um, the board is up and running. The board is ready to work, and I'll walk you through um, the settings if you attempt to do this on your own. Now, so I haven't printed with this board yet, so I don't have any idea what the print quality is going to be like or anything else. I wanted to get the more expensive uh, TCM drivers, the Trinamic drivers. I just couldn't afford them at the moment. They're like 15 bucks a driver, um, and I already had a bunch of the A4, uh, A4988, uh, I think that's what they're called. Um, I'll double check. I never really looked up, looked up the number. I just kind of bought a whole bunch of ramps and bought a whole bunch of those. So I've got a ton of those drivers in reserve. So I'm going to tap uh, the home button because this is um this is a touch screen. Um, it does have a knob. You can use the knob. So I'm going to attach the home button, and you can see that all the motors do run and um. Everything is uh, working, except for the Z. I think I have a little problem with my Z axis. I still need to shave it down a little bit. But other than that, it's not uh, it's not too much of a problem. Um, like I said, I just need to shave down the, the there's a, there's some plastic on the Z-axis that I need to shave down just a hair. Um, unless it's not firing, unless it came undone, which case that's entirely my fault because I'm letting everything lay around loosey-goosey like that. So, uh, settings wise, oops. So first off, we're going to go into structure, and then we're going to pick standard XYZ machine, and then click advanced settings. We're going to click the end stop settings, and you guys can see um, how this is set up. Each of these end stops is set up to trigger when they're low, uh, because apparently that's what these end stops like. Um, so scrolling back out, we go into... Uh, the motors and then click on direction and you can see that um, the x-axis is going forward the y-axis is going forward the z-axis needed to be reversed the e-axis is forward and the second e-axis is forward um, so pretty much everything is set up ready to go um, I'm going to do some test prints in the next couple of days uh, and then I'll let you guys know how that turns out. I'll probably get a video or something out on the next couple of days to show you how it all comes together. Um, so until next time guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell and uh, I'll have another one up for you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.